What's up guys, this is Vinylic Puma, and today I think I've got something special for you guys. Now, it's been requested in the past that I make a video comparing the weapons from all of the Borderlands games, and today I'd like to go over 10 of what I think are among some of the best sniper rifles in Borderlands history. Now before we start, this video will include snipers from across all of the main series games, so that means Borderlands 1 snipers are going to be put together and compared with some of the best snipers that both Borderlands 2 was well as the pre-sequel have to offer. Also, keep in mind that there are a ton of amazing sniper rifles across all three of the games. So if you don't see your own favorite or personal best sniper rifle in this video, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's bad, it just simply means that it didn't make the list. However, without further ado, I am pleased to present what I think are the top 10 best sniper rifles in Borderlands history, starting now. Number 10. The Long Nail. While not the most powerful sniper rifle in Borderlands the pre-sequel, the Long Nail is definitely one of the coolest, especially if you can get in in a cryo variant. Now, the best way to describe the Long Nail is that it's a variant of the Droog sniper rifle from both Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel that has the same effect as either Mordecai's trespass skill from Borderlands 1 or the exact same special effect that appears on Borderlands 2's trespasser sniper rifle, which of course has the ability to bypass an enemy's shields. Now, what's really cool about this ability is that you can effectively ignore the enemy's shield while sniping them. So, if an enemy has way more shield than it does health, you can usually perform a couple of well-placed headshots and the long nail will basically one-shot that enemy. Additionally, what's also pretty cool is the fact that the long nail goes extremely well with the cryo element as the player can easily freeze enemies while their shields are still up, opening them up to taking far more damage on critical hits. While I think there are other more conventional snipers out there that are capable of higher damage per shot and potentially more damage per second, I like the long nail because of its overall great ergonomic feel and I have to say that this is a really fun sniper rifle to shoot. If you want one, you can acquire one from the Invincible Empyrean Sentinel during or after completing the bestest story ever told side quest mission. Number 9. The Skull Masher The Skull Masher is a pretty cool shotgun sniper rifle that is one of the very few weapons that appears in every Borderlands game in a relatively unchanged state between each release. Where other weapons like the Volcano and Classic Cobra got renamed the Magma and Omni Cannon respectively in the pre-sequel, the only major change that the Skull Masher underwent was between the original Borderlands and Borderlands 2. Specifically, the Skull Masher received a slight downgrade to the weapon's projectile multiplier in exchange for semi-automatic firing capability, where it was a pump-action sniper in the original Borderlands. Out of all three games so far, I'd have to say that the Borderlands 2 variant is the weakest. However, that's mostly due to the B nerf. The Borderlands 1 original is pretty powerful and will let you pretty much mow down virtually whatever is in front of you with one or two well-placed headshots. However, I think I prefer the pre-sequel version the most thanks to some of Nisha's broken skills which allow you to shoot the Skull Masher at walls and then have the bullets ricochet at enemies, lighting them on fire. What I will say is that regardless of which game you play, the Skull Masher is usually a pretty great choice. If you want one in Borderlands 1 or the pre-sequel, it can be obtained from any suitable loot source. As for Borderlands 2, the Skull Masher can drop from either the Son of Mothrak in the Wildlife Exploitation Preserve or from Rakanoth in the Silas Grove in the Hammerlock's Big Game Hunt DLC. Number 8. The Reaver's Edge Penetrator Aside from being one of the few hybrid weapons in Borderlands 1, like the Ajax Ogre or Nemesis Invader, the Reaver's Edge Penetrator is a pretty awesome weapon in the original Borderlands. This specific variant of the Reaver's Edge, though, occurs when the legendary doll Penetrator Barrel spawns on the Reaver's Edge, and as you can probably imagine, this is an extremely rare occurrence, resulting in a hybrid weapon. The base Reaver's Edge itself isn't really all that special, because all it really does is have has superior weapon parts, increased weapon zoom, and slightly enhanced magazine size. However, the penetrator barrel that's added from the legendary doll penetrator is special because it is a fully automatic sniper rifle barrel. 
potentially making it the first automatic sniper in a Borderlands game. So in a certain sense, you can sort of think of the Penetrator as the precursor to a lot of the snipers made by Vladov in the later Borderlands games. Otherwise, this hybrid variant crossover between the Doll Reaver's Edge and the Doll Penetrator is pretty powerful, and if you want it, try to see if you can get it to drop from Reaver after you've completed the Two Wrongs Make a Right side quest in Borderlands 1. Number 7. The Pitchfork so, the Pitchfork is one of the legendary weapons that was carried over from Borderlands 2 into the pre-sequel that remained relatively intact. Unlike a lot of the other legendaries, which either got reskins, got renamed, or a combination of both, the Pitchfork was largely unchanged from the Borderlands 2 original. Overall, the Pitchfork is a pretty great sniper rifle in both games, as its special effect allows the player to fire three horizontal projectiles while hip firing, and then fires in volleys of five horizontal projectiles during the Pitchfork's burst fire. While the Pitchfork is a popular weapon in the pre-sequel, it's not quite as popular in Borderlands 2, and I'd attribute this to the fact that the Pitchfork has a horizontal projectile pattern in addition to the fact that there are better and more convenient sniper rifles to use in Borderlands 2. After all, the Borderlands 2 Pitchfork has to compete with the likes of the Pimpernel and the Lyuta, in addition to some of the community's other popular favorites like the Jacob's Muckamuck, the Vladov Droog, or the Malawan Snyder. If you'd like to get your hands on the Pitchfork in Borderlands 2, the best way to obtain it is to get it to drop from Terramorphus the Invincible during or after the You Will Die side quest. As for the pre-sequel, it can be obtained from any suitable loot source. Number 6. The Bessie In my opinion, Borderlands 1's Bessie is the precursor to what I would consider to be the modern Borderlands sniper rifle. Unlike a lot of the other Borderlands 1 sniper rifles, which suffer from either poor accuracy and or spread while scoped, Bessie is basically perfect while scoped with no projectile spread. So, like a lot of the snipers that appear in both Borderlands 2 and the pre-sequel, the bullet on the Bessie is going to go directly where you aim it. Otherwise, the Bessie does have a number of other quite useful attributes going for it, including increased critical hit damage, increased base damage, boosted bullet speed, and a superior scope zoom. Now, it is worth mentioning that the zoom on the Cyclops is better, however, I think the Bessie ends up being far more accurate due to the fact that it has no bullet spread and virtually perfect accuracy. While the Bessie may not hold up as well to some of the crazier and more unique sniper rifles in later Borderlands games like the Pimpernel or the Lyuta, the Bessie is a pretty awesome weapon in the original Borderlands game and is better than most of the other sniper rifles that were available. In fact, if you plan on playing Borderlands 1 and are going pretty far into that game, I would say it's worth it to try to farm some badass Desperados, Crimson Lance Chests, or Cromorax to just try to get the Bessie, as I can guarantee that you're gonna love this gun. Hopefully, it'll return in Borderlands 3. Number 5. The Machine So, the Machine is a pretty fascinating Droog variant that's billed as the pre-sequel's boss killer sniper rifle. Much like some of the pre-sequel's Malawan lasers, the machine has continuous damage bonus which increases the machine's damage on subsequent hits, and when this is paired with the Droog's inherently high fire rate and Aurelia's I Never Miss skill, you can get some fairly impressive results while pulling off consistent criticals. Generally, I tend to recommend this weapon on either Aurelia or Claptrap because you tend to go through ammo fairly quickly. However, you may also find that you can get some pretty good use out of the gun on Nisha provided you take the Moxtail Potion that allows you to get ammo regeneration. I think the sad part about this weapon is that it couldn't initially spawn in-game at the pre-sequel's launch, and my guess was that Gearbox or 2K was going to make this a part of some community events, but ultimately never did. Now, with that said, you can still get this weapon as a generic world drop, however, I will say that it's pretty rare as it can be obtained from any suitable loot source, so you're gonna just have to keep an eye out for it and hope that you get one. Number 4. The Morning Star So, the Morning Star is actually a somewhat unremarkable sniper rifle at first glance. While it does sport increased base damage, it is a Hyperion sniper rifle, which can be a turnoff for some players. 
Plus, while the Morningstar's boosted critical hit damage effect is cool, I do think that it is outperformed by a lot of other sniper rifles that are available in Borderlands 2. Specifically, I think you'll find that a lot of non-unique snipers like the Jacobs Muckamuck, Malawan Snyder, and even the Vladov Drug may be better choices than the Morningstar. However, what makes the Morningstar special is that its special effects, which can occasionally increase critical hit damage, can be used to perform an exploit that can greatly increase the critical hit damage potential of any weapon. All you have to do is equip the weapon you intend to infect along with the Morningstar. Then, swap to the Morningstar and proceed to deplete the Morningstar's magazine. Go ahead and let the reload animation start, however, before it completes or successfully reloads the magazine, quickly swap to the weapon that you intend to infect. Then swap back to the Morningstar and then repeat this step over and over until you start to really hear the female voice loop over itself and glitch out. If you've done the glitch correctly, you should be able to transfer the Morningstar's special effect over to the other weapon. In my mind, this exploit makes the Morningstar one of the best weapons in the game, and it's likely one of the reasons that the weapon wasn't included in the pre-sequel. While it's possible that Gearbox will patch this weapon at some point in the future, we are going on six years without a patch, and at this point, I'm going to go ahead and say that the weapon is going to be unaltered in the years to come. But, if you want to go ahead and get the Morningstar in Borderlands 2, all you have to do is complete a side quest called Hyperion Contract 873 located in the Highlands, and this magnificent sniper rifle is yours. Number 3. The Orion A major favorite amongst Borderlands 1 players, I've got to say that I'm pretty surprised that the Orion never made its way into Borderlands 2 or the pre-sequel. Especially when you consider that a lot of other Borderlands 1 snipers made their way into the sequel and its spin-off. The Orion was awesome not necessarily as a traditional sniper, but more so for its ricochet potential. The player could fire one projectile that all of a sudden became three, so what players would do was aim the Orion at the ground slightly in front of an enemy, and then try to get the three projectiles to hit, dealing massive damage. In fact, this is somewhat similar to Borderlands 2's Pimpernel, which has five child projectiles that spawn from the initial after hitting a surface. The difference is that the Pimpernel is not dealing with ricochets, thus you have more control over where each individual child projectile lands. Regardless, the Orion was a pretty awesome sniper from Borderlands 1, and may have actually been the best one because of this sniper's unique ricochet ability. So if you're playing Borderlands 1 and you just so happen to come across the Orion, it's going to be a pretty awesome weapon for you to use for a while. Number 2. The Pimpernel Now, if you're pretty familiar with Borderlands 2, I'm sure you're not all surprised by the inclusion and placement of the Pimpernel. After all, it's fairly easy to get as all you have to do is complete the Don't Copy That Floppy side quest, and the weapon is quite possibly one of, if not the best snipers in Borderlands 2. The main reason for this is because the Pimpernel, sort of like the Orion, has secondary projectiles that can spawn after hitting a surface. However, instead of the ricochet itself producing additional projectiles, the Pimpernel just spawns five child projectiles that shoot outwards from where the initial projectile hits. Unlike a lot of other sniper rifles, where the goal, of course, is to be precise and get your headshots as clean as possible, what you want to do with the Pimpernel is aim slightly below an enemy enemy's crit spot, fire, and then try to get the child projectiles to hit the crit spots, dealing massive amounts of damage. As you might expect, this gets pretty overpowered with Zero's boar skill, and Salvador can massively boost the Pimpernel's attributes by dual wielding. Overall, the Pimpernel is an amazing weapon, and if you have the Captain Scarlet's DLC, it's a must-have. Number 1. The Lyuta slash White Death when it comes to sniper rifles in Borderlands 2, I would argue that the Lyuta is the pinnacle of sniper technology, and might just be the best sniper rifle in the game. This is because it's based off of the standard Droog, which may not sport the highest base damage in the game compared to some of the other non-unique sniper rifles in Borderlands 2, but because it is based off of the Droog, the Lyuta is capable of some monstrous damage per second. What I think is even crazier is the Lyuta special effects, which just increases critical hit bonus while also adding additional projectiles in a horizontal formation after a certain distance. 
In fact, if you can manage to properly gauge the distance at which these additional projectiles split from the initial, you can potentially triple your damage per shot, which is pretty crazy on a weapon that's already known for having some incredibly high fire rates. It's also worth mentioning that these projectiles are unlisted, so if you plan to abuse the B-Shield in Borderlands 2, you can get the amp damage to apply to each projectile, greatly increasing the Lyuda's damage even further. I would say regardless of your build, character, playstyle, or weapon preference, the Lyuda is something that should be in your arsenal if you're playing Borderlands 2. And if you want one, you can acquire one from an NPC named Gettle that's located in the dust after or during the good, the bad, and the Mordecai side quest mission. All right, guys, that's going to pretty much wrap up this particular video. Thank you guys for watching, and if you feel so inclined, feel free to leave a like, and also feel free to leave a comment with the term doodle sack, which, in case you're curious, is an old English word for bagpipe. Otherwise, like this video if you liked it, click the bell to join the notification squad, and as always, take care, and I'll see you all next time.